Hello aviators, how are you today? My name is Magna Nordal, I am an ATR captain and instructor. First of all, a thank to all of you who are helping me keeping this channel growing. So if you want your name on this screen uh, next time, you know what to do. This Q&A is longer than normal because I include questions from other videos. Um, the last one will show you how to enter holding with FMS in the ATR 600. So I'll stay put. First, we have responses from the last video. Sir, my question is that what conditions of ITT should we crank the engine? If not, then at what limits of ITT, provided the fact that ITT of 250 degrees can come within limit after delaying feather by 19% NH? Can we need to crank the engine to avoid excessive ITT and damage to the engine? Would really appreciate your answer. Normally, we will not crank the engine before and start to reduce the ITT. Um, the limitations are all temperatures up to 800 during start are okay. Uh, then we have a limit between 800 and 840 for 20 seconds and higher up to 950 for 5 seconds. We can run the engine started three times within 1 minute 30 seconds total time. So if we crank the engine before we start, then we use one, and we start the engine. That's number two. If you have to abort that start, and for example, uh, we have no ITT indication, then the checklist tells us we have to crank the engine for 15 seconds. Now we run for the third time. And after that, then we have to wait for four minutes before the next start attempt. Um, I know it, uh, might be useful to crank the engine, but it's not described as a procedure anywhere, so it's up to the company. And they can also talk with ATR to make sure this is a proper procedure. Hello, my new questions. What memorable cases did you have in your career? Was there anything dangerous? Thank you. Well, I haven't crashed an aircraft yet, but uh, yes, I have been on the limits. I have not exceeded them, thankfully. The flights I remember most are with the light aircraft early in my career. For example, I flew a tiny little rally with 100 horsepower engine all the way from Bardufoss in the north of Norway to Kristiansand in the very south of Norway. This day was special because there were no clouds on the sky. The same Q&H, unlimited visibility and this was in the middle of May. There was still a lot of snow in the mountains and it was green in the lowlands and flying and enjoy the scenery on Norway was just amazing. Next. Hello, Captain. My question is on Mel 29-11-01, mine hydraulic pump. There are a few conditions. One of them is aircraft is not operated on narrow runways. That means less than 30 meters wide. Why can't I land on a runway if one of my hydraulic pumps don't work? I have ACYBTC, hydraulic crossfeed. Thanks. Mail is used for dispatch, not for landing. That's one thing. So you have to take off first. Um, if you have to take off from a narrow runway, but they say it's operating, so it's mean take off and landing. And with one hydraulic pump off, you have reduced the redundancy. Um, and when you come to limit you to not operate on narrow runways, that means it must be directional control. And that leads to rudder nose steering and spoilers. And you know, nose steering and spoilers are powered by hydraulic power. But I am not able to answer more than that because we have uh, two main hydraulic pumps. One is out and the other will feed through the crossfit, the other hydraulic system. And the blue hydraulic system has an auxiliary pump with, and this will kick in if the blue hydraulic system goes below 1500 PSI. There might be a delay, that might be the reason, but uh, if you know, I would like to see it in the comments below, because I am not 100% sure about this. Okay. Next. Hello Magna. Imagine ATR reaching out to you for the next generation of ATR 42 and 72, asking you, 
What would you change, improve or remove from the cockpit? What three things would you ask for and why? Stay safe. Best regards from Bavaria, Germany. Thank you. Um, I will ask them to remove all alerts that happens when the engine shuts down and when we switch off a system. After landing, we switched off the probe heating and we get fault alerts, but they are switched off. I find that the difference. And when we shut on the engine, we get generator and air alerts. But again, that's because the engine is shut down. So if they could remove that, great. Number two, I want to change the alert window to become a status window. So I will move the uh, memo panel to the bottom of the status window. They are blue, right? So on the top, we have the red, then the amber as today. Then I will add white captions when we select something off. Then a green, for example, uh, the fuel pump is running. And number three, when a door is open and propellers are not turning, there should not be an amber alert about the door. It should be amber when the propeller is turning, and it should be blue when uh, the propellers are not turning. That's what I would ask them about. Next. Hello, Magnair. A question on engine power. How high is maximum shaft horsepower for the PW127? Engine shaft horsepower is calculated through torque multiplied by NP, that's the propeller RPM. And with the RTO uptrim of 100% torque and 100% NP, we see on shaft horsepower of 2750. Pushing the power levels up to the wall will increase torque to 115% with 100% NP according to the FCOM table on chapter 2.1.4. So, when I have 2750 at 100% torque and 100% NP, I must have 3162.5 shaft horsepower at 115% torque. Correct? Yes, absolutely correct. Um, moving the power all the way to the wall means uh, you are in an emergency, for example, a wind shear, a microburst. This is not normal procedure, it's just to prevent you from hitting the ground. And while you do this, you may exceed the ITT limitations, which then will deteriorate the engine's life. So you only use it if you need to save your life. Okay. Next, what do you know about parts availability for the ATR, especially landing gear? Why are they so scarce? I cannot answer this. Um, I know some operators, they have no problem getting spare parts within a couple of days. Landing gear are quite special uh, parts and they are not in high demand, so maybe the production rate is very low. But ask ATR operations, they will answer you. Hello, Magnai. Given a chance that you will be able to get a type rating on a different commercial passenger aircraft, what would it be and why? Hmm. Well, it will never happen, but if... Uh, Airbus 350. I like the Airbus philosophy and the cockpit design. You know the ATR is 50% Airbus already. And the T50, because it's a new model, with the latest avionics. I like that. And it's just a great aircraft. Next, thanks for the video, Magnair. When can we see the final part of the ATR tutorial series? Well, when it comes to systems, I am only halfway. Uh, right now, I made some tutorials about uh, flying the primary flight display, and there will be two more coming. The VNAV approach and localizer approach, where you use uh, vertical speed mode for descent. So they will come soon. Uh, response to a video I made about TCAS. Captain, does the standard 3 new avionics suite equipped with auto TCAS no like those on Airbus? Uh, no. To have an automatic TCAS response, you need auto throttle, and ATR aircraft don't have that. And response to a video called Double Trouble, that's about the dual DC generator fault. 
This might be a stupid question. There are no stupid questions, only stupid answers. But where does APU and RAT, Rammer Turbine, comes in? Dual DC fault video. Um, you don't find APU and RAT in ATR. Instead of APU, there is a break on the propeller gearbox on the right side, engine number two, which means the engine, the gas turbine, will run, producing electric power and uh, bleed air for the air condition. Ram air turbine is very important in aircraft where you have hydraulic powered controls like uh, Airbus and Boeing. This is less important for an uh, ATR because all primary flight controls are driven by manual force. The old traditional steel cables are fly-by-wire Mark I. Response to a video about engine flame out, a takeoff. Just a question. If I have a loss of torque from 90% uh, to 70% on one engine at takeoff, which procedure I have to apply? Engine flame out at takeoff memo items? No, not that procedure because there is no ATPCS action, no auto feather, no web trim. As long as engine produces positive power, leave it there until you are at a safe altitude. Then you can deal with the problem. Um, the proper checklist here will be abnormal engine parameters in flight. And uh, it may result in an engine shutdown. Response to a uh, video about electric systems. Hi Magnai, is there a theoretical discharge rate for the hot main and emergency bat buses with the battery switch off? Because they are hot, there must be some sort of depletion over time. Yes, there will be a tiny, tiny depletion, but we are talking about very long periods of time. But the hot main bus is powering the ground handling bus, and this bus is powered if you open a refueling panel, or the cargo door operating panel, or the cabin door. So for example, uh, you leave the refueling panel open. Now the refueling system is powered and this will deplete the uh, main battery, maybe it takes 12 hours or so. But there's a risk, and of course if you run the cargo door many times up and down, the main battery will run out sooner or later. Response to a uh, video about um, air condition. Thank you for informative video. I have doubt about regarding the rotary knob for temperature control. When there is auto temp mode is given, then what is use of this rotary knob to control the temp? It is understood when it's in manual mode, rotary knob is required to control the temp. But when it's in auto mode, will that rotary knob make any difference? Can you explain? There is no grading on this knob, but uh, 12 o'clock is a comfortable temperature. It's just like the AC in your home. You select a temperature here, and the AC will adjust the cooling and the airflow to give you that temperature. So there is an electronic temperature controller that will do the job and adjust the valves to give you an end result which is comfortable. In manual mode, you control the temperature control valve directly with the knob. So now you are responsible to control the temperature. I hope that was an appropriate answer. Next, Response to El Navinav approach video. Hello Magnair, since RNP approach is a non-precision approach, does it need to add a margin of 30 feet, ATR is cut B, on MDA, even with the use of VNAV? Is there a need to add 30 feet margin if uh, LNAV CDFA is written on the approach plate? When you fly El Navinav approach, you will see the mean is defined as a decision altitude, even if it's a non-precision approach. That means you don't have to add anything to the top, just like with an ILS approach. When you fly an LNAV approach, it is defined as a MDA. And when you see MDA, you add 30 feet. Some companies say 50 feet. That's up to you. Whether it's written CDFA on the approach chart is not relevant to this. Okay. Next, response to a tutorial made for Microsoft Flight Simulator ATR model, video number two. 
Hello Captain, I have a question for you. How insert a holding pattern in the MCDU? Okay, let me show an example. We are inbound Dalso waypoint and we'll enter a holding there. First, we select flight plan page. Click the left line key next to Dalso. This opens the lateral revision page. Select holding. Check inbound course. I will use 021 as this is the track to the next waypoint on the flight plan. We check turn direction. We can swap right or left. We select right. Click execute. When reaching Dalso, the aircraft will enter the holding. It will stay in the holding until we click clear and press the left key next to the clear to exit next label. Execute. The aircraft will now make one turn in holding and then continue to the next waypoint in the flight plan, Mike Mike 501. To remove the holding entirely, I select Direct 2 and the second line with Dalso. Execute. If you want to hold at your current position, press the uppermost left line key and select holding. And that's all for this time. If you have more questions about ATR aircraft or aviation in general, please write them in the comment section below before next Sunday and I will answer them. The next video is scheduled for Wednesday. Thank you for watching, have a wonderful day and happy learning!